time now for a check of what's happening in the world of culture. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Kathy Clifford. Now, the Guadalupean author Marisa Conde has just been announced as the winner of the new Academy Prize for Literature. And it's a new prize, isn't it? Because it leave, it's filling a gap which was left by the absence of a Nobel Prize for Literature, uh, which was cancelled because of the Me Too scandal. Tell us a bit more about it. Okay, so Marie Condé, described by the jury as a grand storyteller, she was born in 1937 in the French Caribbean island of Guadeloupe. Uh, she's written some 20 novels, perhaps the, the best known is her novel Sigu. And she's, she's in her work, she often focuses on uh, the effects of colonialism and and how the, those affected uh, sort of try to regain their heritage. And, and uh, the jury said that she really deals with this with humor and uh, with respect. So let's take a listen to her reaction to that award. Everyone in Guadeloupe will be thrilled and happy to see me receive this prize. We are such a small country, only mentioned when there are hurricanes or earthquakes and things like that. Now we are so happy to be recognized for something else, for this. Maurice Condé up against uh, Vietnamese Canadian author Kim Thuy, who, who writes about the refugee experience. Also up against uh, one of the kings of the fantasy genre, um, Neil Gaiman, and uh, was up against Haruki Murakami, but he dropped out to uh, stay away from the media attention and focus on his writing. So a very varied and uh, multicultural shortlist there. OK, but of course, that wasn't the real Nobel Literature Prize, was it? Just to remind us uh, why it was that the Nobel Literature Prize has been suspended this year. So this was the literally, literary world's uh, Me Too moment. It all began in November last year when a Swedish newspaper published um, testimony from 18 different women accusing French photographer Jean-Claude Arnaud of sexual assault and harassment. So how is he linked to the Nobel Peace Prize? He is the husband of um, Katarina Frostensen, a well-known poet, Swedish poet, who is a high, what well, was a high-profile member of the Swedish Academy. That's an 18 body ancient elitist uh, committee that picks the prize each year. Um, the article also revealed other allegations involving conflict of interest, uh, funding, uh, the leaking, potential leaking of uh, prize winners from husband to wife. Um, and these allegations have really split the acad academy in two. And there was a fierce infighting and internal investigation. And um, it really, it, this was what forced the Academy to postpone uh, the, Nobel, the Nobel Prize uh, this year because they didn't have enough members to, to even vote. Uh, meanwhile, Jean-Claude Arnaud, um, he uh, last week was sentenced to two years in jail, convicted of uh, one of two charges of rape, which he denies, and he's set to appeal. OK, so that explains why the prize uh, didn't happen this year, the Nobel Prize. Um, but tell us about this new Academy that's had to step up to the plate and fill that void. So uh, it all began with Swedish journalist Alexandra Pascalidou, who rallied the support of over 100 Swedish cultural figure, uh, figures and created this uh, non-profit organization called the New Academy uh, to run the prize. Uh, and they'll now actually dissolve in December. Uh, the Swedish Academy had been faced, uh, even before all this, had faced... Um, criticism for being too elitist, for uh, perhaps not being diverse enough in, in its choices. So the new academy are trying to do things differently. Some of the, the names that do appear on the, well, did appear on the, the long list were much less highbrow, much more accessible. For example, uh, J.K. Rowling was on there. Um, also, the process was much more, the process itself was much more transparent and uh, inclusive. Uh, used librarians from across Sweden. Also, um, a global public vote in which uh, almost 33,000 people voted around the world. And uh, before this panel, then choose the winner. OK, um, let's move on now from literature to, uh, well, another kind of art form, uh, because, of course, that Jeff Koons statue of tulips, uh, which was uh, installed in France, didn't go down too well, did it? And it's now found, let's say, a final place where it's going to be installed. 
Yes, the, uh, the uh, controversial bouquet of tulips will finally find its home in the gardens of Paris's, uh, Paris's Petit Palais. It was originally supposed to be placed uh, between the Palais de Tokyo and Paris's modern art museum after being gifted to the city a year after the Paris terror attacks on November 13th, 2015. However, there was a huge backlash with cultural figures protesting what they saw as flashy and cynical piece um, of product placement. OK, so not perhaps the most loved piece of art in France. Um, tell us uh, just briefly, who is the guest on today's edition of Encore? So Matt Dillon spoke to France 24 ahead of the release of his latest film in France. The American actor plays a serial killer in the gruesome The House That Jack Built, directed by Lars von Trier. It drew gasps at its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival in May. Matt Dillon told our culture editor, Eve Jackson, how this film raises questions about key issues such as gun control in the US. It really is, I think, an allegory for what's happening in America the collective conversation about gun control, like back and forth with absurd rationalizations about it. And then in the end, you know, there's another incident, another tragic incident, another school shooting. And you can watch the full interview with Matt Dillon at 5.15 Paris time and on our website, france24.com. Okay, thank you very much indeed for today's instalment of Culture. Cathy Clifford, thank you so much.